Welcome back to another video and once again we're working on them again. Today's aim is to tidy the engine bay. So all the work that we've done in the battery today and our airbox will be coming out again. But the reason why I put it together in the first place is just so I knew that I had everything and anything else that needed to be done could have been done. So we're going to be taking our wipers off. We're going to be taking the scuttle panel out. We're going to be cleaning in there. We're going to be using compressed air to blow any leaves out from under the inlet manifold. And we're going to be degreasing the entire engine. And we're going to try and pinpoint this oil leak. So the majority of the engine bay is complete. There's leaves everywhere. And of course we've got the oil everywhere down there due to that leak. But first we're going to be removing these and get our wipers out. The wipers came off dead easy considering. So as we can see, it's absolutely filthy and we're going to put the drain back in and this one to come out as well. So we're going to put the drains back in and give it a good scrub. got both of the drains in and as we can see there's quite a bit of glass in here so top tip I've done this in the past I've done it on my mum's Renault Clio her drains were blocked and the scut was absolutely flooded so I stuck my finger down one of them holes turns out then I'd had the windscreen done all the little bits of glass had gone down there stuck my finger in ripped my finger to shreds so don't be sticking your fingers down there, you don't know what's there. And these shards of glass just prove that. So I'm just gonna wash it all out. I'm not gonna be sticking my fingers in there at the minute. I've got as many leaves out by hand as I can. Time to start scrubbing. As we can see I've got it all sudsed up, I've just given it a quick little once over with this stuff, it seems to be alright that. I've got it nice and wet, I'm going to let that soak for a while and then I'm going to attempt to get that thing to work again. Look at that, absolutely spotless. Entire scuttle is now assembled, wipers on, all lined up, swiftly moving on, got the battery box out along with the ECU and I've just done our near side and our off side and I've done the slam panel, not really much to see there, just a bit of soap and water and a brush, I've not touched the engine just yet. We've got our wiring all wrapped up and I've got a glove around our throttle body and that's the only thing really we need to worry about. We're not using high pressure water, nothing like that so the majority of it gets wet in the vein. Coming in through the grill up off the roads. So we don't need to worry about the rest of it. That's as good as I'm getting with that snow foam stuff. I've got the whole entire engine bay caked, so I'm going to leave it to sit for five minutes, rinse it off, and if I need to degrease it, I will. So I've let the soap set now, 
give it a good go with the snow foam, give it a good go with this stuff, I mean it's grease and road grime, it's not touched it. And we've got oil all around the engine, so it might possibly be the rocker cover. We've got oil on our chassis leg down there, it's all over the box, and down the back of the engine. But all I can do at the minute is clean it and try and pinpoint it. I've resorted to the Al Gunk, got it in a separate container. This should definitely be doing the job. Little update. That's about as most as I can get. Still need to do the bottom of the block. But right now, I'm just going to take the plazy R for the inlet manifold off. Just to get down on top of the rocker cover. And then when the oil leak does develop again, I'll be able to see exactly where it's coming from. Inlet manifolds off. Came off quite pain free really. This to me doesn't even look like oil to be honest. Possibly might have had a little bit of blow by out of there, out of the crankcase recirculation. But we definitely had some oil down here. But this I wouldn't consider being an oil leak. So I'll give it a good scrub. Just letting it set now. Just needs a rinse off. Removed all the road grime. Before I put the plastic half of the inlet manifold on, I'm going to give it a good clean. I've got newer woodings for where it connects to the aluminium part of the inlet manifold. And I've ordered one of these, this is a Renault only, this. An O-ring for our crankcase recirculation. So, while I'm waiting for that, because that's not going to be here for a day or so. I've spotted a little bit of rubbing on our injector wiring. So I'm going to go ahead, dry that out and tape it up. And here, this might be the source of the oil. That's supposed to be white, it's gone yellow. As we can see, it's nice and white there. So if we unplug this sensor, that's engine oil. So I would say that that is where our oils come from here. So I'm going to go ahead, get this replaced as well. So we'll have fresh O-rings here and here. I'm going to swap this out. And I'm going to continue to degrease the entire engine. So if anything does ever show its face again, we'll know exactly where it's coming from. I've just been and picked some of our seals up. And I'm getting the manifold ready to go on. I've took the throttle body off. And this is what I've found. not good. Where I'm up to at the minute is, I've just had a look on the car, I've had a look at the other pipes going to the manifold and they're all vacuum lined so there's no oil flowing through anything else apart from our crankcase recirculation. So that will go from here back onto the inlet for our throttle body. So normally because it is a petrol you get a slight misting of oil that when you put your finger in you do get a little bit of residue but I've never seen anything like this. So there's two possible reasons for this. Number one, is which I'm hoping that it is, is previously it was owned by a woman. She's took the kids to school, parked it up, and on the other occasion she's gone and got bread and milk, and she's never put a foot down in it. So if she's changing gear at 2,000 revs, 1,500 revs, something like that, it's never gonna get enough welly to shift all the crankcase gases that's been recirculated and then it's built up in here. And number two, which is quite likely, with all the silt that we found in the airbox, fingers crossed, none has got through the actual filter. But if it has, that would be D-Day for the Megan because it will then cause excessive wear, get down into the engine, which means as it's running, 
the gases inside the chamber where the piston is, some escapes past the piston rings and down into the engine, into the sump and where the crank lifts and then it's the same gases which gets recirculated. So if there's more pressure going into the sump, into the crankcase, it's going to get more oil coming out the top end. So I'm going to continue with the V-Build, there's not much I can do with it at the minute. This is how it's come out. I'm just going to get the compressor out the shed and I'm going to blow all the water out. It's absolutely spotless. So when the oil leak does come back, if it does, I'll know where it's coming from. And of course I'm going to get the water out of there. I've got the manifold prepped. We've got our new o-ring in there. We've got all new o-rings on the inlet. It's cleaned inside and out. And I've picked the new camshaft position sensor up. It didn't look like the other one had failed, but I've gone ahead and got another one anyway. The o-ring had definitely had its day on the original. So we're going to go ahead and throw this on now. It's all back together. I've not put the battery today in, just while I check for leaks. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Tipping over very nice now. I've just checked the vacuum leaks, got a bit of brake clean and all fittings all around here. Seems to be perfectly fine. Got no oil. We've got good oil flow up top. Top half of the engine is all back together nice and spotless, there's no oil leaks, brought it up to temperature che checked, absolutely bones dry. our battery is in properly, I've put a new battery tie down on there so it's not red rusty anymore, our gearbox is nice and clean, got new o-rings in our manifold, so we're going to move on to underneath, it's quite oily underneath as well, I've just given it a bit of a blast with a bit of petrol, so it is wet, it's not fresh oil. And again. It's quite thick. So we're going to give it a wash, and then see if we can see where it's coming from underneath. So I've given it a good scrub, I've degreased it all, I've soapy watered it all, and it's come out spotless. Our gearbox is now clean, because the oil was coming down onto the bell housing from somewhere. We had a big blob of oil here, that's all nice and clean, the sump is clean. The drain plug for the sump and the drain plug for the gearbox, they're nice and tight, so they're not leaking. And it's absolutely spotless, and I've brought it up to temperature yet again, and there's still no leaks that I can find. So to recap, I've removed the intake manifold, put a new o-ring in our crankcase ventilation, I've put all new o-rings on the intake. I know that I didn't have any leaks on the intake because I tested that before I took it off. But the crankcase recirculation, we possibly might have had a bit of blow-by in the past. So they're all replaced now. And I've replaced the camshaft position sensor due to the oil that we found in the electrical connection. Just in case it was leaking from there as well. So the engine itself now is absolutely spotless. At least now I've got peace of mind that I know it's not leaking oil out everywhere. So if it does ever leak again in the future, I'll know exactly where it's coming from.
But the amount of oil that was on the bell housing, the amount of oil that was on the undercarriage and on the sump, I've got no explanation for. Because at this moment of time, there's no components on the engine that I can see have failed. That would have caused all the oil that we had. Possibly someone might have spilled some oil as they've topped it up. And that's got a little bit on the rocker. And then the stuff on the bell housing, I've got no explanation for. Big blob on the sump, no idea where that's come from. Along with everything else on the undercarriage, no idea where the oil could have possibly come from either. It's all back together. We've got no leaks as of yet. And it's running sweet as a nut. So this is going to be the end of the video. If you've liked what you've seen, leave a like, leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe so I can catch it in the next one. Thanks for watching.